hello everybody welcome to december and i can't even believe it the last month of the year it's bananas um i can't believe how fast this year has flown we have such a great group of passionate and involved leaders today uh, lined up to share with you strategies that they are using to actively recruit talent you're going to leave this session today with some proven strategies to recruit and retain talent recruit and hire talent and i'm not talking about one or two people i'm talking about 40 50 people at a time and i think that we can all appreciate the strategy and skill that it takes to get those results right now in today's uh, landscape of hiring and recruiting. So pretty excited for you to meet some new people today, but also see some returning um, favorite people like our Erica Sword, um, who's got some additional great ideas that she's going to share with you today. We're so excited to have these folks with us. My name is Jessica Miller, and I'm the Director of Workforce Strategy for the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, and we are so very happy to have you here with us today. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us, and if you're returning, thank you for coming back and joining us again. Uh, please do take a second and introduce yourself in chat. Tell us who you are, where you work, what you do, what you're passionate about. If there's anything that you are exceptionally interested in learning about today, pop that in there. Um, also, share your best practices today. This is an opportunity to engage in this community that we've established together uh, who are all actively working on the same things regarding workforce. Our session will go today until noon, after which we will segue into our 30 minute unplug session where we invite you to turn on your cameras, unmute yourself, ask questions of our panelists as well as our team uh, of strategy consultants verbally or through chat, whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, I would also like to take a moment to encourage you to fill out the evaluation at the end of our time together today. We'll get that popped into the chat for you probably several times throughout our time today. Um, as always, these webinars are recorded and available to view at any time via YouTube, as well as our CareerForceMN.com website, where you'll find recordings of all of our previous sessions, two years now under our belt, as well as record, uh, resources from all of those sessions as well. We will be utilizing our chat feature again throughout our time. Please do ask questions as we go. We're going to utilize those questions to ask our panelists um, and prompt, as well as we'll incorporate those into Unplugged if they don't, uh, if we don't have the opportunity to really dig into them during the main portion of the webinar. Um, our team of consultants work regionally, which means that each consultant will have a slightly different way of doing their work based on the region, the employers, the type of businesses that we serve in those areas. But the common core ways that we serve our employers are identified here on this slide. We work with you to identify gaps in your current strategies, ensure that you're connected with your local, regional, and state workforce partners, and we assist you in building out strategies that will help you attract and retain workforce. When you work with us, you are automatically connected to a wide network of people and partners who work collaboratively for the success of our state, our regions, our communities, so that your businesses and our workforce can thrive. We never do this work alone, and it takes many people to bring the success to these efforts and to be assisting you to implement those strategies. We have a super packed agenda today with amazing guests, as I've mentioned previously. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Shayla Drake, our Northeast-based workforce strategy consultant. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about um, utilizing, um, if you're still utilizing passive recruitment strategies, why um, active recruitment is um, now essential. So with that, we're going to move right on into the agenda. So very briefly, we're going to just review basically what active recruitment is. Um, and then right on into the panel discussion, we've got Ali Bilden Camps from uh, Norseman North Force. We've got Jamie Her Husky from um, Hellion. We've got Erica Brookshire from Park Industries. And we've got Erica Sword from Life 
spark and I am so excited about the conversations that we're going to have today. So I am going to limit the amount of time in the presentation that I'm going to do and move right into the conversation um, with the um, subject matter experts that we have today because they are full of information. So with that, we're going to move right on in to today's portion of the presentation. So basically, what is traditional recruitment, right? So traditional recruiting relies on just tried and true recruiting methods such as posting the same out of date job description to multiple job boards and then praying that the right candidate applies. But in all in all honesty, really, it's what we've known in traditional recruitment, right? It's it's posting it on our website, posting on a, a few job boards that we're familiar with, waiting for candidates to apply, and then, you know, putting them in our same standard onboarding processes that we maybe tweak occasionally. But, you know, that's it. it above and beyond that, it, it's it's not much else. So what does active recruitment look like? Active recruitment is the process of actively seeking out candidates who are looking for active, active opportunities. That, that sounds simple, right? But what does actively seek look like to you? And then does that align with what you're doing at your organization? And do you know where and how to look in the communities you're looking to secure talent? And are you aware of barriers to job seekers seeking opportunities or applying for them? And then, you know, in an organization, you know, traditional versus an action approach within a tiered organization, you know, active recruitment can be practiced and adopted within all levels of an organizational system to lead to more effective recruitment strategies and effective retention strategies. So at the operational level, if you're at a job fair, for example, are you sitting at the 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 job fair booth talking to your table mate? Um, engaging with your table mate, or are you standing in front of the table engaging with the career seekers that are passing by and trying to get them to to engage with your your career table, for example, or um, management, or are they um, completing performance evals and employee monitoring, or are they actually modeling culture and showcasing the employee value proposition every day, right? Are, are, are they just trying to check boxes or, or, or are they really worried about showcasing and modeling what the company actually, like living and breathing company values? And the executive level, are they just investing in efforts or are they actually participating in efforts um, because sometimes people will look at the C-suite and they're like, well, they're willing to give money, but they're not willing to invest time um, in efforts. So kind of with that, um, like I said, our panelists have a lot of information that they're really excited and willing to share. So we're going to move straight into the panel discussion. So I'm really excited to introduce our panelists. We've got um, Allie Vilden Camps from North Bend um, North Force. She is a consultant um, and program manager. She joined North Span in 2022 as a consultant, provides community and organizational development services. She also manages the North North Force program by connecting career-minded individuals with professional advancement opportunities and supporting our regional employers current and future workforce needs. Allie brings over 15 years of nonprofit management and community development experience, including working with organizations and individuals across all sectors. She has roots in Northern Wisconsin and has called Northeast Minnesota home for almost 20 years. Jamie Herhusky is a dedicated HR professional, currently putting her passions to work as a senior human resources administrator at Hellion USA, a solar modular manufacturer in Northern Minnesota. <clears throat> she graduated from Bemidji State 
in 2020 with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration with a specialization in human resources, and most recently earned a SHRM CP credential in the summer of 2023. Her HR passion lies in talent acquisition, employee development, and engagement. As a strong community advocate, she has utilized her connections to support the growth of organizations she has worked for. Outside of her work, she is an avid volunteer, Girl Scout leader, hiker, reader, gardener, mom, wife, <clears throat> pet mom to her three cats. Erica Brookshire is the talent acquisition manager for Park Industries with a rich background in recruitment and human resources. From a career shift after aspiring to be an elementary school teacher, Erica discovered a passion for connecting individuals with the right positions. In her current role, Erica leads talent acquisition operations, emphasizing strategic recruitment, community branding, pipeline development, and diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives. With over 10 years of human resources and talent acquisition experience in widely diverse industries, Erica excels in screening talent management and implementing innovative sourcing strategies with the goal of being to create the ideal match, ensuring a seamless integration of skilled individuals to the park industries team. <clears throat> and then lastly, we've got Erica, market outreach talent acquisition specialist words today from LifeSpark. She's an experienced talent acquisition specialist with over 13 years working in the healthcare industry with a demonstrated record of successfully putting the right people in the right seat. Erica believes this role is not just a job, but a calling, and she is passionate about connecting people to the right opportunities that align with their career path. To her, this work is an honor, and she has thoughtfully built relationships with the people to understand growth goals, but also why, so that she can match their skill sets with their passions. Her spark comes alive when she sees the people making a difference in their organizations and contributing to their workplace experience. Erica has a Bachelor of Applied Science from the University of Minnesota and has strong expertise in staff retention, healthcare, recruiting, human resources, and CNA. So with that, I'm super excited to introduce the panelists and we're gonna move straight in to our questions. So I'm going to, first of all, thank you all. <laughs> for coming and being part um, of our Workforce Wednesday today. I can't thank you all enough for being here. Um, it's absolutely fantastic having you. Um, so my first question is gonna be, I think probably to the whole group. Um, we've talked a lot about um, in the beginning, just you know, active versus traditional. Um, but what are the key attributes of an active either employer or a recruiter or an active recruitment team? So I would say this could be for the whole group, and I'll start just kind of in the my my view here. We'll go um Ali, um Erica B, Jamie, and then Erica S. Yeah, great. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you all for being here. It's so exciting. I just see we saw that we hit 100 people. That's amazing. Um, super excited to be part of this panel today. Uh, again, I'm Allie Building Camps. I'm a consultant with Northspan and I manage the North Force program, which is our um, sort of workforce development program powered by Northspan. Um, when I think of active recruitment, I think you nailed it in the beginning with the example of coming out from behind the booth. Shayla, at the job fairs, um, I do a lot of job fairs and we host job fairs. And I think the most successful uh, employers are the ones who are, um, are actively like reaching out, shaking hands, talking to students or job seekers um, and really putting that outward effort. Uh, it is hard. I'm sure, we've all been to job fairs before. It, it can be hard and nerve wracking for folks to walk up to a table. Um, and so I think just putting that energy out there is really important. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Erica Berkshire. Nice to see everybody here today. And um, just to touch on kind of active recruitment, kind of the key piece for me is going to be that engageability. So being there, being present, being engaging, but also remembering at the end of the day, what are we? We're, we're salespeople. We're selling jobs. And that is something that I've shared with my team as we've grown and developed is we, we have to sell the job. And how, did, how do you do that? You're transparent, you're honest, you identify the culture. And being able to do that in a professional and innovative way is really key to what we're doing today. Absolutely. Oh, 
You're muted, Jamie. I saw it. I was coming. I'm Jamie Horowski, and I want to just add on to both what Allie and Erica said. Um, we do a lot of job fairs as well. And one of the things that I found to be successful is not just networking with and selling to the potential applicants, but also to the people working at the job fair. Um, meeting other people who can give you insight into kind of ideas to make it successful. And also, um, how should I say this in a way that doesn't sound weird? I find that we get people who apply who are there with other companies. So I think putting yourself out there and networking with everybody and not just the people who you're trying to target will really make you more successful. Erica? Hello, I'm Erica Sward. Um, all of those answers are awesome. Answers are great answers. So how to top that? I don't know how, but I do agree getting out from behind the booth, you know, interacting with whether it be, you know, people next to you or you having um, folks come up to you. But I'm a big believer in confidence. When the recruiters have confidence in those roles, they know the, the high level of the role. They know what that role is going to look like and they can speak on it confidently that's really what's going to get people more engaged when they know what the role is about. And then also like just coming from healthcare, you know, knowing perhaps what other roles are available within the organization. So if somebody's coming up to the, you know, I'll just use the hiring fair for an example, since we're kind of on that role, someone coming up looking for like a CNA job and, you know, the recruiter there, she doesn't have any CNA openings, but she knows other facilities do having that confidence, like, Hey, you know, this other facility has them, you know, like giving them the information. And like I said, again, having that confidence can speak super highly on those roles. Those are always great things to um, attract talent. Mm -hmm. So with that, how would you say, because we're talking about like being salespeople and, and being, you know, confident and, and being able to promote yourself and your opportunities in a way. Um, so this 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 next kind of talks to that. So I'll I'll do this from an employer side and I, I guess a consultant side. So um Ali, I'm I'm thinking that you you probably um can you give us a brief overview maybe of how you at North Banner North Force either how you have at your organization or at other organizations that you're aware of that you can see that you can recommend to employers on this session to assist them to maybe do those things or to to maybe highlight some promising practices if if they aren't at that level currently or maybe they have maybe some super introverted staff that maybe um it aren't aren't able to to do that or or maybe don't know how to navigate th th those ways. Or can you give us a way of maybe right. how North Van North Force can assist employers or, or a maybe other type of um, services like that in other areas of the state that maybe provide the same type of services and 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 how how you can assist or how other practices can help? Sure. Yeah. So with North Force, if you're not familiar with the program, um, we uh, we are essentially basically at the very base of it, kind of a job board. So candidates can sign up and we match them with jobs. So employers post their jobs, candidates sign up. The thing with us is we're hyper regional. And so we only work in seven counties in northern Minnesota and three counties in northwest Wisconsin. And uh, we do that intentionally so that we can provide one on one um, support to both employers and uh, job seekers. Seekers. So every time a job seeker uh, posts a profile, I connect with them individually and ask if there's any companies they're interested in learning more about. Is there anything specific I can help them? And I try to be that conduit between employers and candidates. And so sort of in the same vein, when we're talking about active recruitment, um, I also work one on one with organize or with employers to help optimize their job posts. I see that on the screen here, Shayla, you've got rewriting job posts for keywords, which is really important. Another big thing that um, I'm so grateful to see happening a lot is uh, employers are posting the salary ranges, which is absolutely so important right now because candidates, the ones that I work with, 
literally won't look at a job post unless it has a salary range. They need to know what they're getting into before they put the time and energy into um, applying for that job. So that's a really big one. Um, North Force can help in a lot of different ways. We found that we've become an important sort of gap filler in the workforce development landscape in Northern Minnesota and Northwest Wisconsin. So some of the initiatives we've been working on have been pipeline events. We've been organizing for healthcare in particular, um, helping uh, introduce high school students to careers in healthcare. Uh, we also, like I said, we host job fairs at local universities. Um, we've, we're doing different um, things like the Workforce Solution Series that Shale has been involved in um, to help employers connect with workforce development folks. So that's where we're finding our niche is the, uh, the connection piece and the gap filler. Um, but one-on-one, -on -one, we can work with employers. We can do strategic planning for attraction, retention. We can do employee um, uh, anonymous sort of employee surveys to sort of get a feel on what culture is looking like and feeling like in your organization. It's really open and we're quite flexible. So uh, I hope that helps answer your question, Shayla. I think the so stuff that you have on the screen now is is great. And I hope we can talk about every single one of these because it's it's really important. And as, as someone that does hyper regional work like that, do you find employers like, like you're doing these career fairs, job fairs and things like that, and you're providing these services, the employers that are more engaged in the efforts, are they finding more success than the employers that are saying, OK, you're you're doing this event, we will show up to the event versus mm -hmm. the ones that are maybe helping plan the event, participating in the event and I would, would you uh, point out Jamie Herhusky as a shining example of active, active recruitment. Honestly, when she came on board, what, six months ago, Jamie, now or so, um, I feel like suddenly her organization and her company is like everywhere. So I think she can speak on a more um, individual basis about what that experience has been like. So good. With that, Jamie, do you want to speak a little <laughs> bit to that? On the spot. I was actually making notes when Allie was talking. I'm like, oh, I have lots of on this one. Um, so we've actually really gone back to the basics. When we came on board six months ago, there was actually no HR here at all. So we found that we really had to kind of recreate the wheel in some senses. And we, went, we really went back to the basics. I reached out to the community. I reached out to the people who I have networked with at job fairs and previous um, contacts to kind of help get our name out there. We've done everything from, we are working with the local newspapers. We've created posters and put posters up in like the grocery store and the post office. We have lawn signs out on the road. Um, we didn't have Facebook. We've developed Facebook to target the people that we're looking for. The people who we're trying to hire, they're not gonna be on LinkedIn. They're not gonna be on Twitter and all that stuff. They're gonna be on Facebook. So we really targeted that and that has been a great source of applicants for us. Um, we've reviewed our benefits and updated our benefits. We include our that we have 100% employer paid health, dental, and life on our job ads, on our Facebook ads. We are putting that out there so it draws people in. Um, we do everything now from walk in applications where we have them here, and as soon as they finish, I take them in and we start interviewing them and give them an on the spot um, offer if, if we like them. Um, We've, we've really tried to be more flexible and also be a little bit more innovative in, in getting that community support because without that, I don't think we would have be where we are right now. Absolutely. And so would you say having a better understanding of your community and where your community is accessing information um, is, is, is helping with that success? I think it really does because you need to know more about your community to be an effective recruiter in your community. If you don't understand the population you're targeting, it really does no good to just put stuff, say, online. Well, we have a predominantly elderly population up here, and we hire a lot of newly retired people, or we hire brand new people who are just out of high school or even still in high school. And I think that you need to know how to target those people and not just blanket it across the board like we because that has been the experience I've had in previous positions where we just blanketed it out there some of the things you don't want to do that's what they solely relied on and then they wondered why it wasn't being successful well you, you need to tailor it to the population you're looking for and I think that's really the only way to be successful in, in getting the people who are kind of under 
underemployed and underutilized really. Absolutely. So with that, um, I'll continue that question to um, Erica, Erica and Erica. So what have been some of the most effective strategies um, you all have um, as employers um, have been able to um, deploy for active recruitment? I can go first. Sure. Um, so at Park, we um, to kind of pigeon tail onto what Jamie was talking about, finding where you're going to find that talent, identifying where to seek for that talent has been really important in all of my roles. Um, some of the talent that I'm seeking here at Park Industries, we are going to find right here in our community. Mm -hmm. Some of the talent that we are seeking as we're growing, we have had to find in other areas and bring into our community. So we have been doing recruiting outside of our community and offering relocation as an option. So to bring that talent into the community, We've also had to adapt and op offer remote positions in some cases where we're looking at very niche IT positions to build out our systems. Um, other things that we have done is really been focused on, you know, COVID shut down a lot of the events and things that we could do in our community. And those were all paused and stalled. And we're just starting to get back to some of those things. So yeah. prior to COVID, Park was incredibly active within our St. Cloud community. And now on the other side, we're figuring out how to re-engage that local community. And so we've, you know, always been involved in the recruiting events, the job fairs, all the way down to that high school level. Um, but what else can we do? So St. Cloud has been really good. We have an event called Epic, and that's exploring potential interests and careers. Yep, it's an amazing event and we are able to participate in that. It's in our backyard, um, but that is something that connects with high school students and helps them explore all the career areas, not just manufacturing, but business and communications and arts and health sciences and gets them exposure and experience. To take that one step further, we've also started um, partnering with Scouts and we are building out an exploring post here at Park Industries for students to be able to explore manufacturing careers. And it, it it sounds really daunting and scary, but we have an incredible gal with the Central Minnesota Scouts who's been helping Park and several local organizations start these posts. And that is, yes, it's kind of passive recruitment, but we also, we get to engage with the parents. They get to see what Park is like and what our culture is like. So we are actively, recruiting the family in a sense. And yeah. so that community branding has been just one of our best friends in recruiting, building a reputation and then staying transparent, consistent, honest, and accountable with those community members, you know, calling them back when we say we're going to, and having that reputation of even if you don't get the job, we call and tell you. <laughs> so, you know, just those accountability pieces are huge. Um, I feel like I'm going to ramble on on this one because I have so many things that I'm passionate about here, but really it is at the end of the day, it's the short game and the long game. You're recruiting in the here and now for the needs that you actively need to fill, but you're also recruiting in the long game. You know, you may not hire that person today for the role because their skills don't fit, but you may want to hire that person in a year and a half to two years to five years and need to maintain and build that relationship with them. So don't forget that though they're not the right candidate for right now, they may be the right candidate for someday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love the fact that, um, you know, the following up with the candidate after the fact, even if they don't get the position, all too often that does not happen. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of the time they applied for a reason and, you know, maybe they are really invested in you and they want to be at your organization, um, and, and, you know, giving them, you know, how they can maybe improve to reapply in the future can, you know, really, really help. So, um, I love that. And scouts, brave. You know what? We have a great partner here, um, and I'm sure that some of the other Scout locations are developing this as well, where you're really able to lean on them for how do we do this. And we're super excited. Our program starts January 9th. Fantastic. 
You know, I think, can I just pop back in here? And I promise I'm not going to like take over things, but um, (laughs) I think that that brings up such a good point, Erica, in that I love it when employers get involved in these kinds of initiatives, right? And so it's great for your brand, but like thinking about our Discover Healthcare events and Mm -hmm. all of the healthcare organizations that are actively involved, not just in showing up, having the booth, doing the thing, like planning the event is so important and actually making that happen, recognizing that, you know, a tide lifts all of us, right? Like we need, we all need to work together, particularly if you're in a sector like healthcare or like childcare, um, education, manufacturing, those kinds where you can actually make a difference in um, the sector as a whole to attract people, to attract students, you know, um, to get more people involved in that. So super cool. Thanks, Erica. I can kind of dive into this question. I got a, a little bit of a laundry list for this, but um, I know it was mentioned before. The biggest thing that I feel like that has helped um, me is finding the persona of like who we're hiring. What is our, who are we hiring and what does that look like so we can target them? So I, so we're not wasting our our time and energy on people that perhaps aren't kind of looking for the type of job that we're hiring for. So that's been really super well for us. Market analysis has been really big too, like going and looking what what are people doing out there? What types of sign-on bonuses? What types of benefits? I know it was mentioned like updating your benefit guide. It's great to do that quarterly, see what pe- other people are doing, um, you know, with their benefits or, you know, what their job postings look like. I know that that's on the, the sheet here. Job postings are huge. If your job posting is super lengthy, I've talked to so many people, they just bypass it. You just want your job posting to be sweet and to the point with the with the information that you need on there. Um, we've for LifeSpark, we've added our recruiters contact information on our job posts. And I feel like that that has been really super helpful in case somebody's like, gosh, that our in visit nurse role that looks super, super good. I don't want to apply. I want to learn more information about it. They have that option to connect with a recruiter and learn more information about what, you know, what that role looks like um, for them. Um, another thing is pipeline building. I am huge on that. So building a pipeline for me, I'm, I'm going to speak on healthcare. I know that there's probably people out there in other different areas, but for healthcare, like anticipating those needs. So social workers, we might be full on social workers, but I'm still connecting with social workers out there, like letting them know, not, ne- not necessarily recruiting them, but letting them know what an awesome place this is to work at, what types of benefits we have, what types of um, you know, like CEUs, that has been a huge thing that I've been noticing when I've been talking to people is that continuing education, investing in our current employees. Um, another thing is brand awareness. Um, those eight touch points. I know somebody had mentioned Facebook, like, and the yard signs, all of those things matter. Um, for instance, this summer, well, summer slash fall, um, LifeSpark did a Metro bus campaign on the tail ends of buses. And then we did a, a card inside of the buses. Um, that's huge. That hit the state fair, that hit um, Pride Festival, that hit the, there was like a festival where there's like a lot of different foods and stuff down in Minneapolis. It hit the um, Twins games and then part of the Vikings game. That's huge for those touch points um, on there because they're going to be seeing that. Um, and we've got a lot of people that would call and they were like, hey, we saw your bus or employees thought it was so cool that we invested that. And they're like, hey, I saw the bus, you know, sending photos and stuff like that, which is really super cool. Um, and then I know uh, community involvement, that is a big thing. Chambers are amazing resources for recruiters. You can, if you're a chamber member, some of the chambers, you can post your jobs on there. You'll be able to see what types of events that are you know, happening in the community for you to be involved in. Maybe not necessarily put a booth in, but like do a pen drop. That's the easiest thing to do, you know, or coasters, like we made coasters with um that we dropped off at like local restaurants with our logo on it and our QR code right to the website. And then on the back of it, I put tic-tac-toe. Why not? You're at a bar or restaurant, something to keep you entertained for a little bit. Those are just super easy things that you can do. Even for healthcare, you have uh oh. Okay, so it's not just me. We lost Erica. Right. Okay, so hopefully Erica will come back. 
she was on a roll and that was good. I was, yeah. I'm back. Yo, yeah. sorry about that. Like you, yeah. you I don't know what happened to it, but you were talking goal, about too. Yes, scrub camps, they're so amazing. Like if you're in healthcare, <laughs> scrub camps are amazing. You have these young people that are excited about healthcare and like, why not get in front of them and get involved? Whether it be, they, I know that some of them, you can just do a simple scholarship. Some of these kids want to be involved, but they just financially, they just can't do it. So your company could, you know, donate a scholarship or they're always looking for speakers, go and speak and get these kids excited about healthcare. And HOSA too, HOSA is another huge thing where you can get in front of kids that are just eager beavers to be in the healthcare industry, whether it be direct care or indirect care. Some, you know, some of these, um, you know, youth that are coming up, you know, direct care they just can't do blood or you know perhaps they are looking for more of that like you know leadership office setting role so that's me on my soapbox about all that <laughs> so you know we've talked about like a ton of different ideas right like all like from everything from career exploration to modification of job descriptions right like we've we've you know all over the place from active recruitment to passive recruitment, right? So what has been in traditional recruitment, right? We've been all over the place. So what is the most effective, if you could pick like your, your if, if you could only pick like one thing that like, ah, oh, I have to grab it, I have to do a thing and I need to do a thing right now. What would be your thing that you would do if I have to do an effort you, that seems to be your most effective if you have to pick a thing is it uh is it pi would you say talent pipeline development is it uh job fairs car career expert like what do you feel is is helps you the most is the most how do i want to say this What is the most effective in securing your talent, I would say, either active or passive, to actually secure the talent? This is broad, but I would say brand awareness because, uh -huh. you know, whether it's it's those touch points that are getting people there. And like I said, I know that I was on my soapbox about like the pen drops and the coasters, but that's what it is because so many of the times people don't know what your organization is or what it's about. So having that out there you know, they think, for instance, they think of like LifeSpark, you know, they don't, some people might not know that we offer or that we hire massage therapists, that we hire chaplains, that we hire, you know, physical therapists and stuff like that. So getting that out there and getting their minds curious, like, I keep seeing this LifeSpark, you know, what are they all about? And then all of a sudden they're on your website, scoping you out or on your social media, checking you out, seeing what you're all about. So I'm a firm believer right now would be brand awareness. Yeah. And Allie? Great. I don't know how to put my hand down. So <laughs> you don't hand, know how I to just, put your, I got you. I you got, got me. You. Okay. Put my hand down. Um, I have so many thoughts on this. Um, the first thing that came to me was we were talking about the job posts and I always tell employers when I'm working with them that a job post is external. A job description is internal, right? Have we all heard this? Has it soaked in? Because so often what I see on the North Forest site is just this massive job description that has all the details that anyone would ever want to know. And it's, I just want to whisper like, that's internal, you know, don't share that. That's, it's too much. And so please, if, if there's one takeaway, just take a look at the job post and put some time in on that. Um, the second thing I want to talk about, you've got, you've got it up here and I, we haven't touched on it yet, but that, that niche hiring underrepresented groups, right? Uh, you have a few listed, uh, vets, caregivers, second chance. There are pockets of folks in our communities that want to work and they have been kept out of the workforce for various reasons. Maybe it is caregiving, maybe it's, maybe they have a, a background, right? And so maybe they can't pass certain background checks, but um, take a good look at, at who you're recruiting to and make sure you're casting a wide net. Um, it's going to help your DEI efforts and it's just going to make your workplace a better place altogether. One of the things that we're working on here at North Forest is a returnship toolkit to help folks who have left the workforce for early retirement or caregiving responsibilities get back in to 
the, the workforce, kind of a zero entry. They're similar to internships. So I'm really excited. I'll be rolling that out after the first of the year. It's a free resource and I'll make sure that Shayla has the info and she can pass it on. But um, I would, we think we're doing a good job, right? We all do. We think we're doing a good job with reaching all, all, all of the groups, but I can tell you, you're missing some. So take a look at that. Jamie. I just really wanted to expand on what Erica said because I could not agree more. Brand awareness. So Shayla and Allie are from my region, so they know a little bit more about my story than maybe other people would. But when I came to this position, I didn't know this was a real company. I didn't even know it was here. It's literally three miles from my house. I didn't even know it existed. And we found that we are we we so we just launched a, a new line. And we had to hire about 160 people for this line in the last four months. Um, and how do you recruit when no one knows you exist? So we really had to go out there. And we we found that job fairs are our number one thing right now because the job fairs kind of encompass everything you need. We are doing the advertising forum. We are partnering with our career force. We're partnering with Shayla. I'm working with Allie. Um, we, we, it's like a whole group effort and those have really helped us to get our name out there, um, and, and help us. I can't even explain to you, like articulate, like how much it has really helped us because now we have people saying, I heard about you guys. Oh my gosh. I have a friend who works there where I, I didn't even know this place was here. So it, it's just, I can't articulate how much brand awareness can help you in your recruitment efforts. Like number one thing, totally. Jamie, do you want to just in the last uh, third, do you want to talk about maybe the rural metro or urbanness of your location and maybe a head count in the last 90 days of how many people um, you've you've been able to uh, hire? So how about I give you head count in last three weeks? Because it's sure. quite impressive. So sure. we are on the Iron Range, we are in kind of a little hub of the Quad City. So we have kind of four cities that are literally like on top of each other. And I'd say our main city here has not even 10,000 people. Um, so it, it's a small area and we're very vast in that we have a very rural-ish community. Um, in the last three weeks, we have hired 65 people and we have a job fair. Literally, when we log off here, I'm going to a job fair. And then we have about 20 plus more interviews over the next three days. We have about, we have less than 30 positions left to fill our line one that launched last Monday. So it has been um, challenging and exciting. And I've literally tapped every resource I know. Um, I have talked to Allie about what I can do. I'm working with Shayla being, Shayla, I need you to help me advertise. I'm partnering with our Career Force Center right now, our local ones in both Hibbing and Virginia to try and get local job fairs set up with them and their, talent, and their applicants that they're using or trying to find jobs to use them to get those untapped resources that we have not been able to reach. Um, newspaper ad. It sounds so weird, but literally going back to the very basics. I posted an ad in our local paper and we got tons of, of applicants from that. I was like, this is so weird. I don't even read the paper, but people in this area do. And so putting the poster at the post office, people have PO boxes in this area because we're, it's like in town and rural. It's weird. People are going to the post office. So really going back to the basics has really helped us kind of tap those people who we weren't going to find putting our ad on Indeed or LinkedIn or MinWorks and, and all those places. Like we're getting people who aren't going to see that. And so it's been very successful for us. Understanding your community. Yes. I love it. Um, so that that is, you know, why I, I it kind of makes me excited about having the, the vast, um, you know, experience, you know, on the panel because, you know, um, Erica, uh, I, I, you know, Park Industries has done some absolutely mind blowing things with outreach um, in, you know, completely different, but it's understanding the community. Um, 
can can you explain a little bit didn't didn't you do circulars at one point actually identifying people with their skill set and inviting them to apply can you explain a little bit about that yeah i you know it comes down and it kind of goes on that brand awareness you know getting out there but being able to connect with the community that you need to connect with in addition to the whole community. So in the past, I mean, Park has had just various initiatives that we've done. And one was we kind of researched our community and our workforce and where are most of our employees coming from? You know, what communities around St. Cloud are we drawing the biggest piece of our workforce from? And then advertise to target audiences within those communities through, you know, postcards and mailers and um, advertising, again, the main routes of traffic and dis into St. Cloud, you know, looking at the billboards, you know, can we advertise on a billboard and what routes see the most traffic and mm -hmm. being very strategic and intentional with those funds because, you know, we, we don't have unlimited resources and that's the hard part is, you know, we, we have to be strategic. And so one of the terms that we've been using a lot at Park Industries lately is operating with an innovation mindset. How do you go out there into the unknown, you know, and find these new things or go back to the old things, the things that we don't think we need to do anymore, like advertising in a newspaper and realize that that's what our community needs. And for us at Park, it's been kind of twofold. How do we connect with our local community? And that is, you know, that's the postcards that's getting involved with the organizations within the community. And also that is knowing that as we are advancing into a more digital age for our company, knowing that we also need to seek out those niche resources. So going, you know, out and figuring out what they are, where the talent that we're specifically looking for lives in the country even so that you can tailor your ads to the regions where those talent you're going to find the most talent um and being uncomfortable because that's something new to you knowing that you're going to spend this money and you may not have a return on investment but experimenting and figuring out what is going to work for you um it's uncomfortable but you will find those resources again i i love jamie's example of going back to the newspaper you know, none of us would say, yes, we're going to do newspaper ads and expect a huge return on your investment. But obviously you had that and, you know, having that courage to go out into that unknown area and just try something different is huge. And probably one of the biggest challenges I think in our is, you know, do we do we have the backing from leadership to try these things and see if they're going to work? That is a that is a great segue. I was going to say, you know, how does your leadership um, support you in your, you know, recruitment efforts? And, you know, with that, I, th I think we'll just start with you and then kind of have that as a, you know, around the, you know, around the horn question. Yeah. So at Park, I am incredibly fortunate to have a very supportive leadership team. Um, and it, it comes down to, you know, they share the open positions on LinkedIn. They, you know, source within their networks, even if it's not a role on their team. Hey, I, I know this person. I sent them this job posting. Um, you know, just those little things. But the sharing of the positions within their networks and even, you know, within those networking groups that they're a part of where they go to, you know, whatever meeting it is once a month, that's huge. Um, but then the backing from them to try things has been incredible. And um, I, you know, not every organization you will find that backing, but you will have to build it. And Park, I'm very fortunate. The leadership here has been 100% willing to say, you want to try that? Let's try it. Let's see what we can do. And I think the biggest thing for us as we seek that leadership backing is having a done our research knowing why we want to try something and being able to present it in a very understandable manner. So, you know, just knowing knowing what you're going for, knowing what your goals are and presenting the information very straight and transparent to that leadership group. Um, uh, Jamie, how about you? How's the support on your with your leadership? Um, our support is something I've never experienced before. It is amazing. It's literally an all hands on deck. We have executives coming and helping at our career fairs. We have executives that, like, we had illness go through pretty much our whole team. They were sitting in on interviews with us to support us and help us get our, our people in the door when, when we couldn't. 
Um, they are helping us by sharing our posts. If I'm like, I want to put a sign out there, like a big letter sign saying, this is what we're hiring for. And this is what it starts out. They're like, do it, just make it happen. So they've been extremely supportive. And, and it's like everyone from our HR assistant to the director of our team, to our, to the VP of our team, everyone has been on board and helping and having their availability kind of open for us if needed. So it's been something that I have not experienced in previous jobs. So I have to say it's really helped us here on this team because without that support, I don't know how we would have hired those 65 people in the last three weeks. And before that, the 45 to 100 people in the last six months on top of that. So without their support and help on little things like interviewing and job um, offer letters, everything, like they've been there to help us through everything. It's been really nice. Yeah, I bet it I bet it's awesome to have that kind of support. It has to be. Um Erica. Um I would say transparency. Um with what what is what does it look like for growth and what's going on with the openings that we have now? And the biggest one that I love is celebrating our wins. That means the the most. Like when we are, you know, we hire this role that we've been looking for for a couple of months and we find that, you know, that white squirrel celebrating those, those that means a lot to the team. Um, as well as listening to ideas. I know that that was brought up, even though it might be baloney thrown on the wall, it's an idea we have and they listen to it and acknowledge it. Um, and then I think another big thing is, um, providing us the information so we can source and hire the right candidate for the role. That is um, key. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you, do you have um, a lot of support in that? Do they, do you feel like it, you're getting a lot of support from your leadership in order to be able to do those things and it's allowing you to do that? That's allowing yeah, you to be able to do that. Ex yeah, for sure. And I love how there's the ability to ask questions and get clarification. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're well here in just a couple of minutes, we're going to move into transition here to our unplugged. But before we do that, I know we've talked about, uh, you know, a lot of um, information and, and Allie did um, give a, a key piece of advice. Um, a little um, a little bit ago, but I do want to do one more around the horn um, about, you know, a key takeaway um, for any employer here, if you could give any employer that's on the session, listen to all of the information from today and whether they are a, a generalist, a recruiter, operations, you know, no matter what they are and they're listening to today's session, what would be the one piece of takeaway that you would have from an employer from today's session? And we can start with, uh, yeah, Allie. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if this question was like included in our original questions, was it? Maybe it was, and I missed uh, it. Yeah, I, key, I uh, key takeaway, and you kind of, oh. you did answer a piece of it in, in one of your answers, but I'm yeah, kind of I circling could go back on to and on about takeaways. takeaways. I actually have a list from what, um, what folks have been writing because I'm like, this would be a great little op-ed, so look for that yeah. from North Price. Um, I really, I also wanted to note, when, you know, going back to the leadership question, I think that more, it's like, it's becoming more and more apparent that workforce shortages aren't like an HR challenge, right? It's, it's a whole company challenge and more and more folks, folks are getting involved using their contacts, using their networks to help promote, um, you know, promote what the openings, which is really great to see, especially at that sort of C-suite level to see folks recognizing that, um, again, it's not just an HR challenge. Um, but I would say really the um, looking out for uh, underrepresented groups, you know, how are you reaching out to those folks? That would be the takeaway that I have, because I, I really feel strongly that that just isn't happening as much as it could. And there are pockets of folks out there who want to work. They just, they might need, we haven't even talked about flexibility, right? Like we haven't even talked about how can employers be more flexible with the job positions, um, whether it's taking one full-time job and creating two part-time jobs or letting folks leave early because they got to pick the kids up, you know, or you know, mm -hmm. anything like that, you know, have flexibility for caregiving responsibilities or doctor's appointments. All of that stuff is, is something to keep top of mind um, to, on how you're, how you're recruiting folks. So 
-hmm. that would be it for me. And we still have another, now remind you with that, we still have another 30 minutes in our unplugged session after this, Allie. So, you know, we can still keep going. So remember, this is just for the transition. So this is the key piece of takeaway, one takeaway right now, and we still have another 30 minutes that we get to talk about it. So we're good. Uh, <laughs> I will go with um, Erica S. Sure. Mine would be to think about developing a recruitment plan or a recruitment strategy so it's visual and you can see it. And the biggest thing is, is it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. I know when people think of recruitment, recruitment strategies, they're like, heavens to Betsy, it's going to cost me millions. It doesn't have to cost you millions. Like there are so many great free job boards that you can use. Um, shout out to Career Force with their amazing hiring event and job posting board. Um, uh, I think it's Liz Jennings. She's amazing. Hashtagging your job posts, but just knowing, like just having that visual there. I'm such a visual person that just breaking it down, seeing what's available, um, you know, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> awesome. Um, Erica. Oh, other Erica. Um, there. Um, I think mine is going to be focused on both the short term and the long term. You know, don't lose sight of your long goals when you're in that crunch, you know, that I need this many people in the next X amount of months. I've got 35 open requisitions. You know, when when you're in that time crunch, it's easy to lose sight of those things that you're doing to build that long term pipeline. But that mm -hmm. long term pipeline has a huge impact. So don't lose sight of some of those long-term goals. And I, I think that goes right with um, Erica's talent or recruitment strategy piece. You know, don't lose sight. They're all important. Absolutely. Jamie? Well, Erica and Erica both touched on both of what I would say. So I'm going to do the cliche route and say that I think that being flexible and being able to, to like kind of pivot um, we have done everything from like expand our hours for our HR team so we can encompass those who are working to do interviews outside of our normal time frame and also be available for our employees and our because we're 24 seven here. So that's really helped because we are able to talk to those potential applicants that come after ours. Um, and then also we are able to pivot and not just do things the way that they've always been done. We're trying to branch out and try new things, go back to maybe revisit something, but with a different mindset and looking at it with a different eye um, can kind of, we can kind of analyze why it didn't work the first time. So being able to kind of to be flexible and deviate from the path that we're already set has really helped us in being able to recruit the, the numbers that we have. Well, we are fixed. I'm going to this first section has been absolutely fantastic. The energy has been great and the, the conversation has been phenomenal. Um, these are the resources that have been shared in the chat. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to James to introduce the session for January. Thank you very much, Shayla. And I have to agree that this was a, an amazing session. Uh, we will definitely try to replicate that next month with the energy and the information. But again, please join us next month uh, for our next Workforce Wednesday webinar, which will be on January 3rd, where we'll be joined by a number of labor market and data experts for demographics or destiny, utilizing labor market data as a business strategy. Um, we'll, be, we'll be reviewing a number of different labor market tools that are available on the DEED website right now for businesses, and we'll discuss how these tools can be used to inform strategy, and we'll also discuss how these labor market tools can be utilized for better grant writing. So again, join us on Wednesday, January 3rd at the same time. Registration is, not, uh, registration is currently open. So thank you so much, Shayla. And with that... Um, we're going, thank you all for being here for this portion. This is our team and we are going to, um, switch everything over, take a quick break and, um, going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to switch everything over and stop the recording.